Hello everyone, my name is Rohit Raja and welcome to my new channel and we will be discussing about popularizing the subject mathematics. Okay, so what is mathematics? We know that it is a science, that is it is a subject that has so many applications, isn't it? So, how is mathematics involved in daily life you have heard many people talk about it isn't it but still there are people who do not understand why we study certain things whether it is mathematics or physics chemistry statistics biology or any other sciences or any other commerce subjects we are being introduced to such subjects so that we have a basic knowledge about the concepts that are studied in each of these. And later in life, whatever field we chose to, knowingly or unknowingly, we apply certain concepts that are discussed in each of these subjects. So we will be discussing about these concepts that are used in mathematics. Okay? Now my topic is about matrices and determinants but first let me just give you a gist about some, about, uh, some of the topics that people just say these don't have applications in daily life. You are familiar with trigonometry isn't it? You have heard about trigonometrical ratios like sin theta, cos theta, tan theta etc. But what are these concepts? These concepts do have applications in various fields. But let me give you a small example. Think of your favorite cricketer. Okay? He is coming into the pitch and he is going to ball. Okay? So does he just stand in the crease and just give a uh, throw the ball? No, he doesn't. What does he do? First of all, he will take a run up, right? What is that for? See, you might be thinking where is mathematics in that? I am just trying to say that there are many concepts that all the sciences are involved in any action that we take. So here if we are telling about physics, you know momentum. So if you are standing at a position and throwing a ball means the ball has, ball attains a particular velocity only. But when you set the body in action, what happens? You will pick up a momentum and that will create a better pace for the ball. That is the application of physics. Okay, yes, very small application. But how do you release the ball? What is our aim? My, my aim is to take the wicket of the batsman standing there. So I want the ball to pitch in such a way that it hits the wicket. How do I calculate that? Suppose I throw the ball from this angle, what happens if I throw the ball from this angle then it might reach just uh, somewhere halfway between the pitch, it might hit somewhere, uh, it might pitch somewhere between the pitch, okay, ha uh, midway, fine, but what do you do, so suppose you want to give a yorker yorker means towards the stems so what you do is you will decrease the angle and throw it in such a way that the angle is towards the like this angle is decreased okay so what is the mathematics there see you know what is sine theta sine theta means it is opposite side by hypotenuse cos theta means it is adjacent side by hypotenuse hypotenuse is this suppose this is a right triangle then this side is called the hypotenuse and the opposite side means if this is the angle then the opposite side is the one that we are discussing about the length of the pitch or the length of the uh, length from my position to the point where I am pitching the ball okay so as we vary this angle, the length also varies. Okay? There are certain other calculations involved in this. We are not going into the details. 
But what I am trying to convey is that even unknowingly we are using these concepts. Okay, there are various other examples that I can state, but I am not going into those basics. Now, I just want to tell you that even if you don't see an application of the things that you study in day to like in the uh, subjects, there can be applications that are used in daily life. Okay, similarly, let me introduce the concept of matrices. Suppose it is a college, okay, and a new batch is joining in the college. So the students have come, they are standing in front of the office of admissions, and I am the class teacher. So I am going to the office of admissions, okay, calling all of them, and I am taking them to the class, right? And suppose this is the classroom, I enter the classroom and Tell them you can go and sit in your places. Okay. Suppose there are no particular arrangements in the class. There are some tables and chairs that are just haphazardly put here and there. The children go and sit as they please. Okay. There are no particular arrangements given there. Then what happens? Now I am new to these people. So I don't know their names. Names are unique. Sometimes names are unique for uh, people. There can be same names for different people. That is another issue. But how do I, suppose I want to call a person from the group. How do I call that one person from that group? Suppose I tell that red shirt wala, please come here. There might be more than two people or more than three people. There might be any number of people wearing red shirt. Or suppose I tell, okay, the specs wala come here. What happens? There might be n number of people wearing a specs. So I cannot point to that one person. That is where the importance of arrangement comes. Okay? So now, what do I do? Before bringing these people in, I arrange the classroom in such a way that, okay, how do I arrange them? I arrange them into rows and columns. What do you mean by rows and columns? So the horizontal arrangements are called rows and the vertical arrangements are called columns. So you see here, these are the rows. Okay, so suppose this is the first row, first row, okay. This is the first row. Now, this will be the second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, etc. I am taking M rows. Okay? This matrix has M rows. 1, 2, 3, etc. up to M. And suppose this is the first column, this is the second column. And this is the third column, fourth column, and so on, up to nth column. Okay, now what has happened here? There are m rows and n columns. Now, in our case of the class, there were 60 students, isn't it? It was a class of 60 students. So, I have arranged my class in such a way that there are 10 rows and 6 columns. Okay? 10 rows and 6 columns. So, what happens? In the first row, there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 tables and chairs. In the second row, similarly, there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six tables and chairs and so on. In the tenth row also, we will be having six tables and chairs each. Okay? So you know, what are the total number of elements in the classroom? Or total number of tables and chairs in the classroom? There will be 60 tables and 60 chairs. So I am considering table and chair together as one element. Okay? Now suppose that is the array. Okay? What is an array? Uh, what is a matrix? Matrix means 
it is an arrangement it is an arrangement of numbers or elements you can include any arrangement like you can include anything you can feed anything into a matrix okay it is it is a rectangular arrangement it is a rectangular arrangement of numbers or elements into rows and columns so matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers in all elements into rows and columns okay so you just see here now what happens what is the use of having such an arrangement now we have see what is the first element here it is the first row first column element okay i'm entering the class so this is the first row i have first row first column element here first row second column element here first row third column element here and so on first row nth column element here in our class first row sixth column element in the second row we have second row first column so first we denote the rows and then the columns so generally we can represent an element in the matrix as the a i j small a i j okay where i denotes the position of the row that is i the row and j denotes the position of the column that is j the column okay now a i j means i the row j the column element and how do we denote the matrix we give a capital letter any capital letter you can give okay for the matrix and the elements can be given by small letters and the subscripts will be i j that is i will be the number of so representing a particular element means i th row j th column element will have a i j as the notation a i j we can extend this arrangement into any forms so that we can accommodate more number of people or less number of people according to the number of people that we need to accommodate we can design this matrix in such a way that it is arranged into rows and columns so how do we do that for that we need to have the number of elements in our mind okay so in this arrangement with m rows and n columns how many elements will be there there will be m into n elements isn't it when there were 10 rows and 6 columns there are 10 into 6 equal to 60 elements similarly if there are m rows and n columns there will be m into n elements in the matrix okay so suppose there are two rows and three columns then there will be 2 into 3 equal to 6 elements in the matrix and what is this 2 into 3 or 2 cross 3 or 2 by 3 what is this value called this is called the order order of the matrix order of the matrix order of the matrix is equal to number of rows into number of columns here it is m rows and n columns so the order of the matrix is given by m cross n it can be called as m cross n or m by n okay so a two rows three column matrix is represented by a okay a it will be a two by three matrix two rows and three columns so suppose this will be the first element will be a one one first row first column element first row second column element will be a one two first we write the row 
and then we write the column then this is a 2 by 3 matrix 2 rows and 3 columns so a11 a12 a13 now second row first column element a21 second row second column element a22 second row third column element a23 what is the order of this matrix order equal to 2 by 3 so there are 2 rows and 3 columns ok suppose suppose there are the order is 4 cross 5 then there will be 4 rows and 5 columns 3 cross 2 3 rows and 2 columns k cross p k rows and p columns so rows are the horizontal arrangements and columns are the vertical arrangements so this is the basic idea about matrices. We have just introduced the concept of matrices. We will be learning theories associated with matrix. That is like we will be learning it progressively. Okay. It will be introduced in such a manner that a student of 11th standard can understand the concepts okay and in the coming videos we will be trying to uh, include problems that are in a an in an increasing idea okay it will satisfy people of all ages we will try to include it in that manner okay and what are the applications of these concepts okay matrices have applications in almost all the fields in many fields Okay, like physics, then uh, physics, economics, statistics, computer science. There are many concepts based on the idea of matrices. The uh, easiest example you can uh, think of is the concept of Microsoft Excel or worksheet or spreadsheet that you see use in the computer, right? What do you do? You enter certain data into these matrices, isn't it? into the rows and columns so then you have many computations associated with that so matrices have applications in many fields okay matrices have applications in many fields and I just want to conclude by telling the definition of matrix matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers real or complex into rows and columns okay why do we say real or complex numbers here right now we are just talking about the numbers okay we are concerned we are concerned about the mathematical approach in matrices and if a matrix has m rows and n columns then its order is said to be m cross n or m by n okay a matrix in which m there are m rows and n columns it is called an m by n matrix okay so this is the idea about matrices okay please Keep uh, visiting our channel and see the uh, concepts related with matrices and we will also be introducing several other concepts of this form. Okay, thank you very much.